In this tutorial video on MuseScore, we'll look at entering notes in MuseScore and playing them back. So we start here with an empty score and we want to add some notes. Before I start orchestrating this piece for the instruments that I want to have, I first want to hear what the original sounds like. And I could go and play this on a piano, but I'm not very good at playing piano, so I'll get MuseScore to do it for me. Once we write the notes in here, into this piano, MuseScore will play it for us. We see this piano has a few places where there are more than one note in one stave, which is normal for piano. But it's not as easy to write into MuseScore, although it can be done. And it's also not so useful for when we orchestrate later. So I'm going to separate out these notes into different staves. So I see we have two different lines here in the bass clef, and then later on there are also two lines in the treble clef. So I'll need four staves. Let's open up the instruments panel again with I. I want to add a second piano. Now I have four staves, two treble and two bass. To write in the notes, we first need to select the rhythm and then select the note we want, and of course, where to put it. So to start writing notes, we'll click the note entry, choose our rhythm, and then click where we want the note. I have a quaver, then a quaver B flat, then a quaver G. Now the problem is my spacing was not quite right, and so I've added in this uh, rest, which shouldn't be there. So let's backspace and write that G a bit closer. Now it's a crotchet, so I'll select crotchet, and it's a G. And then I need it tied onto another quaver, so I'll choose quaver and tied on. We can see with the mouse it's a bit fiddly and it's very slow to do. The keyboard makes things much quicker. I'm going to deselect my note entry, select these, and delete them. Let's see how we would do this with the keyboard. I'll select my first position, and now I want to choose the rhythm. Well, the rhythm is already selected with the quaver, but you could see there it says eighth note four, and that means if I press four on my keyboard, either on the numbers at the top or on the keypad, it will select quaver. Crotchet is five, minimum six, and so on up, and equally going down, three, two, and one. So I'm going to select four just to make sure that it's selected, and I'll choose a D on the keyboard. Fantastic. Then I know that my quaver is still selected, so I'll choose B flat and G. And now I want a crotchet G, so I'll choose crotchet five and G on the keyboard. Now here's the problem is that it hasn't got the right octave. That's easy enough to fix without touching anything else. I'll press control and up and that changes the octave up one octave equally. Control and down goes down one octave, but I want it up there. Uh, next is that quaver tied, so I'll choose quaver four, and tie is plus on the numpad. So it really helps to use the numpad for these, uh, for these rhythms. Let's carry on here. We have an E natural, so I'll choose, uh, I've still got quaver selected and E, but that's an E flat and I need an E natural. And the way this works in MuseScore is if I press the arrows on the keyboard up or down, I move by semitones. And so I know that an E natural is one semitone higher than E flat. And so there's my E natural just by going up one on the with the arrows. Next is F, and of course that's F sharp, so up one again. We can make these accidentals quite easily. Then a G and an a, E flat. Now it says in our score E flat there, but we sh don't actually need that because it's in the key signature, so I'll ignore that. And let's carry on a bit faster. C and tied with the plus A, B, D. There we go. Now I want to move on to the bass clef. I've done the first line. I want to try these bass clef notes. Uh, but if I click somewhere, I'm going to write a new note. See, if I want to select things maybe, uh, oh, but I couldn't select that, I instead wrote, added in an extra note. So undo, control Z, is really useful. Uh, what I'll need to do is press escape so that I'm not adding notes in. And now I can click on things and select them. 
notice that we're also hearing this at the same time which is very useful uh, so the bass clef we'll start with the top line of the bass clef so we have a rest and to write a rest in we press the zero on the numpad and then I want a crotchet rest so five and zero and a quaver rest four and zero and now I want my D again we've got the wrong octave not a problem control and up we'll take it up there to the C now these are not tied of course these are slurs uh, and we'll add all the articulation in later so we are adding in ties now because the, because those are part of how long notes are um, and we can't really get rid of them we, we can't do that later but the slurs we'll add in later so I'll keep going with a rest and a crotchet so that's five rest five zero now it's a crotchet A and a crotchet G and another crotchet G. There we go. Certainly much quicker with the keyboard. I've added in notes for all the bars that I had in MuseScore, but now I've discovered that I've run out of bars. Well, that's not a problem. I can add bars at the end by using the shortcut Control B or the Add menu Measures and Append One Measure. If I find that I've made a mistake and I've skipped a bar somewhere in the score, it's very easy to go back and let's say I've skipped a bar over here. So I'll select that bar and use the insert button on the keyboard. There are plenty of details still to be put into the score, all the dynamics and articulation and expression marks, but it gives us an idea at least of how this will, will sound. To play back, click on the place you want to play back from and press spacebar. That means that I can also start playback wherever I like, so from here. If I want to hear only particular staves, like perhaps only the bass clef staves, I can mute the treble clef stave in the mixer. To get to the mixer, I press F10. We'll need to drag things around here so that we can see what we're doing. In this case, we have two pianos, and so MuseScore can only mute one particular one. So I'll mute this top piano. And now if we play, we only hear the bottom piano. This can be useful later when we're doing our orchestration to hear how different things fit together.